Afternoon Adventures, and welcome to Spells Illustrated. It's a working title. It's a new show I'm going to try out that involves diving deeper into some of these spells, the ones that are maybe a little more complex or situational, and show how they can be useful and the drawbacks that they may have in those cases. I want to start with a spell I did a short on the other day where I may have confused some people. I said that Earth Tremor makes difficult terrain in a 5x5 five five square. What I meant was 5 squares by 5 squares, as in a 25 by 25 foot area, but that was very understandably confused for a 5 foot square space. So I want to clear that up, first of all, but also I just want to show an example of a situation in which the spell can be useful. So let's go over to our grid here where we've got our adventurers coming out the side door in the alleyway next to a bar because this war band of an ogre leading hobgoblins, how they teamed up is story reasons, it's in the past, who knows. They're out for blood, they're coming for these adventurers to claim vengeance over something that happened before. And they've blocked off the main door with, I've drawn a log, but it could be a rock or a cart from a nearby shop that's been overturned, anything heavy to funnel them into this alleyway where the hobgoblins can move in, the ogre can move in, and take them out right quick. It's not a good situation, so let's see what we can do to start this battle off right. Now, negotiations have of course broken down, there probably weren't any to begin with, and initiative has been rolled. For the purposes of this, let's assume our sorcerer is going first. This dragonborn over here, this blue boy, Let's call him, I don't know, Croesus after one of the dragon priests in Skyrim. That's blurry, but there you go. Is going to be a brave boy, move forward a little bit, and cast Earth Tremor to try and disrupt this front line of enemies. Now, that will also hit our barbarian friend. Let's call him Grognak, because obviously. And there's some question as to whether this spell would go through like a wall, say, and hit the creatures inside the tavern there. I'm going to assume that the tavern has a foundation that isn't loose earth, so they won't be affected, at least in this example. Anyway, he casts his spell, and I'm going to actually roll these because I think that'll be fun. Let's say that this sort of cheese looking die is going to be our ogre. And let's give Grognak the Barbarian this sort of reddish-orange one. And then the two blue ones will be those two hobgoblins in front. Just for fun, let's see what they get. Okay, the Ogre has gotten a 10. That has a minus one modifier, so that's a 9. That's going to fail. Croesus's DC is probably 13. That's very common for low-level adventurers, being 8 plus 3 from Charisma is pretty normal for low level to have a 16 in your main stat. And then two from proficiency bonus gives us a total of 13. So that's going to fail. It looks like one of the hobgoblins got a natural 20, so that's going to stay up and not take damage. The other one has gotten a five and Grognak has rolled a 13. He probably has a positive dexterity bonus as a barbarian. He might also have danger sense, so I probably could have rolled that with advantage. Either way, let's assume he succeeds. Earth Tremor doesn't deal any damage on a success. So, let's see what the ogre and one hobgoblin will take. Oh, that's a little uh, imbalanced on the base of that hobgoblin there, but it's upright enough that I'm going to count it. That's a five. I rolled pretty well as it turns out. That's almost half as much HP as hobgoblins even have. So that was lucky. That won't happen every time, but just as an example. So this ogre is going to fall prone. And let's say it was this hobgoblin, I wasn't being very specific, it was going to fall prone as well. Now, the ground is also difficult to rain, so I'm going to grab this little green marker here. You can mark it with whatever, or just kind of remember, and just kind of make a little reminder that that is difficult to rain. Now, our sorcerer friend probably doesn't want to be up front, so he's going to back up. Remember that he already moved two spaces. So he's going to move... That's 10 feet, of course. So 20 because of difficult terrain. 
30. He's going to move here behind his barbarian friend, use him as a wall. And that's going to be all of his movement. If he has a bonus action, he can also do that. Just remember that he can't cast a spell as a bonus action because he's already cast a spell of first level or higher with his main action. Now, up next, let's say it's Grognak's turn. Just for the sake of example. He has to deal with the difficult terrain, which he's probably not super happy about, but these enemies are close enough that that's not going to be a big deal. He can walk up 10, 20, 30, rage, reckless attack. Actually, he doesn't have to reckless attack. That's the whole point. And attack the ogre with advantage. I also want to take a moment here to point out if Krosis had been an Eladrin or Shatter Kai or certain other races, he could have used a racial feature to teleport away, or for example, orcs can dash as a bonus action a number of times per long rest. Those are ways that he could have gotten even farther away from the enemies. Now, let's also assume that Grognak hasn't moved up yet. Let's back that up a little bit because I also want to point out these creatures are prone and in difficult terrain. Now let's back it up a little and say that it's the Hobgoblin's turn after Croesus instead. This one gets up from prone using half of its 30 movement speed. Now it has 15 feet left. This is a hard corner right here, which per the rules as written, you have to go around. You can't go diagonally through that. So he has 15 feet of movement and he's in difficult terrain. Also, in this case, he would have to move through his ally, which is also difficult terrain. So that would be 10, 20 feet. But since he doesn't have 20 feet of movement, he would have to dash. Otherwise, he really can't get anywhere. And since he's dashing, he wouldn't be able to take any other actions this turn. This one that remains standing could move through here. 10, 15, or sorry, 10, 20 because of difficult terrain. 30 and can get just far enough to attack Grognak if he wants, but not far enough to attack Croesus or any other party members for that matter. So hopefully you can see how manipulating difficult terrain and knocking creatures prone can be helpful at the start of a fight and can set up your melee allies to deal some damage and how situational use of the spell could help keep your backliners, your spellcasters, healers, etc. a bit safer. This is just one example, of course. Every situation is going to be different, and depending on what you and the other players and the DM and the enemies the DM is controlling all do, everything is going to go differently every single time. I don't know what I'm trying to say anymore. I'm kind of rambling. If you liked the video, leave a like, please. It does help the channel. It lets YouTube know that this is something that you enjoyed and you want to see more of. You can also do that by subscribing and ringing the little bell, if that's still a thing. Is that still a thing? Yes, it is. And... I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was informative for some of you. And I will see you next time. And until then, happy adventuring.